Hello everyone. We are going to talk about this uh, second of our criteria for wetlands. But first, let's review what the three criteria we need in order for an area to be a wetland, according to the Army Corps of Engineers. First, we have hydrology. Second, hydric soils. And third, hydrophytic vegetation. Today, we're gonna to talk about hydric soils. If you remember from the, the lecture, there are soil survey uh, maps that were based on actual so soil surveys where people went and dig ho dug holes in the ground and determined soil types. But those maps, because you know digging holes isn't easy, uh, especially by hand, those maps tend not to be as accurate as we would like them to be. They're still pretty good, but not as accurate as we'd like them to be. So um, we do have to do a little bit more work to make sure that we have hydric soils and wetlands. But first I want to show you a paper copy of the soil survey of the Pierce County area in Washington State. So these were what they looked like back in the day. Now we have the soil survey, uh, web soil survey that the USDA has put on, on the internet. So just to show you what the soil survey map looks like for the flat wetland, I open it up to this page and the page actually flips out. And the flat wetland is sort of right there where my thumb is. And you, can, you may not be able to see, but it says 12A. That is the soil uh, series that we have in the flat wetland. And that is called DuPont muck. So just on the basis of that, we have a pretty good idea that we do have hydric soils present, but we need to confirm that with observations. Okay, so. Hydric soils are organic dominated. Why is that? Why is there a lot of organic matter in wetlands? Do you need to? You can pause the video and think about that. We did talk about it in the lecture. So hydric soils are organic dominated because wetlands have water. And when you have water, you have less oxygen, which means less decomposition. A anaerobic decomposition without any oxygen is slower than aerobic or with oxygen decomposition. So you have a buildup of organic matter in wetland soils. As I said, we do have the soil survey maps, but they're not as accurate as what they, we'd like them to be. Um, and in addition, we may, may not be able to confirm with those maps that we have hydric soils. So instead, we look for indicators of hydric soils. And those indicators are listed on the back side of the wetland delineation data form up top here. And there are a lot of them. And remember that you have indicators that are for all soils, which have um, A and then a number. So A for all. You have uh, S, which is for sandy soils, and F, which is for uh, uh, loam soils. So we need to dig a soil pit in order to determine if we have hydric soil indicators or not. To do this, we dig a soil pit down to about 20 inches. Um, and then we do some observations of the soil profile. So what the soil looks like in terms of soil color, the soil texture, that type of thing. I have already dug my soil pits and as you can see, there's water in the hole because we definitely have hydrology. Um, the first thing that we wanna do, if you uh, look at the data form, and again, if you want, you can pause the video and pull out your copy of the wetland delinea delineation data form so you can be looking at it as you're watching the video. But the first thing that we need to do is record the different uh, horizons in the soil profile, so the different layers in the soil profile. And we need to record the soil color, 
and the texture for those different layers. Now for this hole, all the way down from zero inches down to 20 inches, it's a consistent soil color. Um, so we just have one, zero to 20 inches, and we just have to determine the soil color, which I have, I've cheated a little bit, and I already did that instead of standing here with our Munsell soil color chart and doing it. But I'm gonna pull off a chunk of soil here, and what we determined, the closest match in terms of soil color, was 10YR21, which is right down here in this corner. So, um, and that is going to match us up with one of those hydric soil indicators. Um, and it's probably going to be the um, dark soil surface uh, hydric soil indicator, just because it is such a dark soil. Um, but again, we don't try to uh, meet, or we don't try to look for the hydric soil indicators themselves. We record our observations in terms of uh, color and texture, and then we try to match that up with the indicators. You don't want to be uh, trying to look for something that's not there. Uh, so, the other thing that we need to do is soil texture. And in the lecture, I had a nice little flow chart for determining soil texture. And we need to do a couple things. Uh, we, soil texture is the amount of sand, silt, and clay particles in the soil on a percentage basis. And there are lab techniques that you can do to determine texture, but instead we are going to use uh, soil texture by feel and estimate it by feeling the soil. So you want to take a chunk of the soil. First thing you want to do is see if you can squeeze it into a ball. And does it remain in a ball? If it does, it doesn't have a whole lot of sand. Because if it was a lot of sand, it wouldn't be able to ball up like this. So it doesn't have a whole lot of sand. Step two, we, we feel how gritty or smooth is it? Um, so you, you put a thumbprint in it and then rub your, your thumb over the, the surface. And does it feel gritty or smooth? And this to me feels smooth. I feel a little bit of like texture there, but that's because there's like roots and stuff. It's not the soil itself. So this is smoother, um, which means uh, that, that silt is, is dominating. It can also be in between. And we might, you might, depending on the area of the wetland, you might say that it's a little bit in between, but this feels a little bit smoother. So that means that silt dominates. Then the last thing we wanna do is try to form ribbons. So you press it between your pointer and your thumb and see how long the ribbons are. And we don't get very long ribbons at all, less than two inches. So this would classify as a silt loam. So the steps that I took where um, it did remain in a ball when we squeezed it. So we come over here and it uh, felt pretty smooth. So that means that silt dominates. And then we came over here and we had a uh, um, ribbon of less than two inches, which means that it's a silt loam. So under texture, we're, we would record silt loam. Okay. Um, now, this was our hole that I know is in the wetland. I have a hole dug in the upland. We are going to move to the upland and look at the soil there and see how much it uh, is different, how different it is. Okay, we are now at our upland soil, soil pit. Uh, that I, we dug earlier. Uh, and I just wanted to show the difference in the soil between the wetland and we are less than 20 yards away from where we uh, just were. Uh, but there is vast differences in the, the soil, color, and in the texture. So really quickly, when you're doing soil color, you need for the soil to be moist. So I have a little spray mister bottle here 
so that we can moisten up the soil. So I'm just going to grab a small little chunk here. And spray it to moisten it. And then we'll come and do the soil color. And again, we did this earlier, so we knew I wasn't flipping through the pages. But what we have in the upland hole is closer to a 2.5Y 3-2, maybe even a 3-3, three, three, somewhere in here. And if I take a chunk of the uh, bigger bit of the soil and moisten it, again, you want to moisten it for the texture part. If I try to ball that up, even when it's moist, it doesn't stay in a ball wants to crumble apart. That means it's very sandy. Around here we have sandy gravelly soil. Sandy because it's there's sand in it. Gravel because there are little gravel. Uh, I'll call them river stones in here. So to review what we covered in this video, we talked about the three criteria that we need for wetlands, hydrology, hydric soils, and hydrophytic vegetation. We look for indicators of soil hydrology, primarily by looking at the soil profile and the color and texture in the soil profile. And what we observed was a very dark soil in the wetland, very uh, 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 a silt loam. And in the upland, we have a much sandier and gravelly soil.